Yes, that's uh, that's very young. Okay, I have hit the record button. You don't need to remind me, but thank you for thinking about doing it because I know you probably were. <laughs> okay, so today's lesson. I'm sorry. What? What was it? Go ahead. Your, your grandson, you'd like to. He had uh, two people a couple of weeks ago and has just been suffering ever since. He now has locked jaw. Oh. oh. I didn't I think, didn't think that was a thing anymore. anymore. Right. All right. Thank you, Carolyn. We'll make sure. Yep, I guess. Thank you, Carolyn. I, I, okay, so today's lesson is about the faith of the wise men. And um, you all see these pictures already. Okay. The faith of the wise men, and it'll be our last lesson for 2023. And um, so in our pre-lesson story, it talks about passing babies around. What did you think about that? We like that. You like that? I like that. <laughs> I wondered if, uh, if if the mother of the baby might be going, oh, you're going to get germs yeah. all over my little baby. <laughs> okay. All right. And so uh, then it goes on to talk about um, uh, taking a look back at some of the tracks we've been making lately. And are we heading towards Jesus? Are our tracks heading towards Jesus? Or are they taking us in a different direction? Well, some of the questions here are about the, uh, have you ever been lost? Yes, I have. <laughs> yes? So, but I, I was probably about 10 or 12. In Weston, every year they had sort of a festival type thing. Uh, with entertainment at the tobacco warehouse. And it was a huge, huge event and a huge, huge crowd. And I somehow got separated, scared the living daylights out of me, and my uncle found me and set me up on a goose thing <laughs> until my dad came along. But I mean, I remember that feeling. I mean, it was like he was never, ever going to get out of this black hole of people and uh, be found. But mm. it's, it's not fun. David? I was lost, frightened. <laughs> well, we're glad you were found. I'm not exaggerating. I left. I was in the eye doctor's office. I said, "Excuse, I need to go down the hall." So you go down this way, turn right. I went the wrong way, and the way that office is set up, it all looks alike. I found my eye doctor and the nurse, and they sent me back to the right room. But I had no idea mm. where I was. Lost in the doctor's office. <laughs> Larry, explore. Yes, that's right. I was in the fifth grade, my sister was in third grade, my brother was in first grade. We moved in the middle of the school year, and we moved our elementary grade school up in central Watertown, South Dakota. It's not a lot of a family. And we came out of the school. My little brother, one year old, says, we need to go this way. And my sister and I argued with him. We said, no, we need to go that way. We went our way, and he was right. <laughs> all the way back. But, yeah, he knew. He was very smart all his life. Paul? Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, so that goes in the next question. Different situation, of course. And sometimes if we're spiritually lost, we might not know it as readily as we know it if we're physically lost. If we're on the wrong road, we know we're not going where we're supposed to be. It's pretty apparent. But sometimes when we're spiritually lost, we may not pick up on it right away. And question number three, has the Lord found you? And if so, how did it happen? And if not, why not? Well, I think probably we would say the Lord has found all of us. Yeah, 
Yeah. We're here. We're here. Right. So we, we didn't get lost on the way to church. And uh, so, um, and I imagine that he found us. Uh, oh, is it really? <laughs> so he found us and um, probably in a variety of ways. As we've shared before, maybe somebody in our family helped lead us to the Lord. Maybe somebody in the workplace, maybe somebody in school, somebody in your neighborhood. But somehow we've all been led to the Lord and to follow, um, well, to take our B1 vitamins and, and become Christians. Well, do you remember me, Basil? Thank you for a lot of this. Feeling of responsibility, Geraldine. Remember, do y'all remember when uh, they had the program and it was all on the book of board? I found, I found, and they held it for so many months, and then they came out with it. Jesus Christ, you remember that? They had bulletins everywhere. Uh, when uh, we had a meeting with the Billy Graham campaign, and I was at a Pleasant Green, and they was telling us they told us what the what the deal was. But they were all bulletins everywhere. You drive down the freeway, you see it. I found it. I found it. And then much later, it said, "I found Jesus Christ." Oh yeah, that's and good. It, it was a good. It, it was all it was good. Well, uh, today's scripture comes from Matthew chapter two, uh, verses one through about thirteen or so, um, twelve, I guess. And um, so this is about the Magi. Um, or the wise men, if you prefer. But uh, reader number one, if you'll take verses one through six, that would be terrific. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who had been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, that he became disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem of Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. All right, thank you, uh, David. So this is the Magi story and uh, Herod's reaction uh, when he heard them. Uh, question number four, what prompted the Magi to travel to Jerusalem? The star. The star, <clears throat> the star that led them there, evidently. And question number five, what caused Herod to become agitated uh, at the arrival of the Magi? <laughs> what caused uh, Herod to become agitated? He was he was, he was king. Yes, exactly right. Of course, uh, when they said they had come to worship the new king of the Jews, he's like, "What?" Uh, what are you talking about? I'm the king of the Jews. Um, yeah, well, he certainly did. And uh, and so Herod was uh, quite uh, upset about who this new king was going to be. And so we know a little bit about what happens later on. Uh, question number six, what is the significance about God choosing Bethlehem to be the Messiah's birthplace? Yes, yes, that's correct, of course. It's the city of David. Um, and I think our lesson tells us that's also where uh, Ruth uh, was uh, when uh, she and Naomi uh, came uh, back, in a sense, from uh, Moab. Uh, so, 
And also, of course, the fact that Bethlehem was really a small town, you know, what New York City or something, uh, mm -hmm. or Jerusalem, it was a small place. And that kind of ties in, I think, to what we see lots of times in Scripture, is that I'll say less important people or less well-known people, less talented people in a sense, are chosen by God at lots of times to carry out different functions. Uh, it's not like he's going to get the best and brightest all the time. He's going to get this person to work for the kingdom. And so Bethlehem kind of ties in that way. And of course, Bethlehem is chosen because Micah chapter 5 verse 2 tells us that that's where it's going to occur. And so this fulfills an Old Testament prophecy, which will be important to Matthew as he's sharing this with lots of other Jews, that this fulfills Old Testament prophecy. Uh, reader number two, we only get two today, so you know you better hurry up and get in here before you miss your turn. Uh, you get verses 7 through 12. All right, thank you very much, Sue, uh, for jumping in there. And um, so we have this situation. Um, this part tells us about the Magi and their encounter with Herod. Uh, initially, he had heard about them and heard that these people had come asking about the king of the Jews. And so now he wants to find out you know, what's really going on. And then we find out a little bit about the rest of the journey. Um, this time period is uh, somewhere between uh, 8 B.C. to 4 B.C. Sometimes people say, well, it's 6 B.C. Well, that'd be right in the middle. And, um, you know, it seems odd when we have our system of the B.C. and the A.D., that we say, well, when was Jesus born? And we say, well, he was born probably about 6 B.C. Well, isn't that 6 mean before Christ? Well, that's immaterial. But anyhow, um, in, the, in the teacher's quarterly, there was some explanation as to how that all came about when someone started figuring out the calendars and the starting date. And But we know that Herod's death occurred the same year that there was a big eclipse. And evidently, they know that that eclipse was in 4 BC. And we also know that Herod was alive when Jesus was born, so he had to be born before that. So um, that's what we have there. So now question number seven, what prompted the Magi to be overjoyed when they found Jesus? Yeah, they'd been on a journey for a while. We don't know exactly where the Magi came from. It said to the east in the scripture. Well, to the east, there's a lot of world to the east. Does it mean it came from Persia? Does it mean maybe they came from India? We don't really know. And um, sometimes we call them the three wise men. Um, during the Middle Ages, I think it became... Uh, common to call them the three kings um but that doesn't appear to be really true that it was actually kings that came but some kind of spiritual leaders who came and followed the star and they had been on the road uh, a long time and the star had guided them 
Where did they find Jesus? In a house. Now, how many of you have manger scenes that have wise men in the manger scene? Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're not really there, at least according to the scripture here. It says he went to the house to found him. You know, he's not out in the manger. So I guess a little bit of time had come. Of course, they said that they heard that the king had been born, not would be born. So Jesus had already been born. And I guess eventually they got out of the manger and into a house. And that's where the Magi sees him. Uh, what does the last, uh, oh, excuse me. What was the importance of the gifts that the Magi brought to Jesus? They were expensive gifts. Yeah. And they possibly had used them to, to live during the period of time before they went back to Yep. Yes. Yep. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh, all fit for a king. Gold, of course, we pretty well understand that. Frankincense and myrrh, uh, perfume. Um, some would use frankincense for uh, healing powers, for medication. So a lot of different things that could have been used for them. Anyhow, uh, and the importance of the gifts that they're very expensive. But also, I think it's the importance of the fact that they brought gifts to give to him, to worship him, even at this early stage. They are worshiping this new king of the Jews. They must have had insight into what he was going to become. Because they weren't Jewish. It doesn't appear that they're Jewish. Well, we don't know for sure, but it doesn't really appear that they are since they came from the east. They came from further away, but whatever. So that's pretty important, I think. And number nine, what does the last sentence tell us about uh, Herod? Matthew uh, 2, verse 12. He was upset. It was mean. He had sinister plans. He had sinister plans. Yeah, those are all good answers. Yeah, it let us know that Herod wasn't a very good person, which we already kind of got that figured out from some other events that come to pass. In verses 13 through 18, not part of our scripture, but the next part of, I mean, not part of our lesson, but the next part of the scripture uh, tells us that not only were the uh, Magi warned about not going back that away, but that uh, Joseph was warned in a dream uh, not to go back. And so where did uh, Joseph and Mary and Jesus go? They went to Egypt for a while in order to get away. Well, it turned out to be a good thing that he wasn't around Bethlehem because what did Herod order to have happened? All the children around two years of age. Yeah, all the male babies, two and under, were to be killed in an attempt to kill this new king of the Jews. So Herod certainly wasn't uh, very good. And um, all those young babies were killed because of Herod's concern. But the important point here, I think uh, several, but, you know, the Magi were following God's direction. And that's the same thing that we're talking about here in our post-lesson story about our spiritual journey. We are all uh, called to follow God. And it, in this post-lesson story, it tells us that we are not called to do something or to go somewhere, but we are called to someone. And that someone, of course, is Jesus Christ. And it tells us that God is calling uh, just for a select few, just like the Magi only. He's calling for all of us. He's calling for all of us, and he's calling for all of us every day. Not just at Christmas and Easter, <laughs> but every day. Okay. And uh, it concludes by saying... Um, like the Magi, our purpose is to find him, follow him, and worship.
worship him, which, of course, we're all here today worshiping him and uh, trying to have a better, closer relationship with him. In question number 10, how is God currently calling you? What is he saying? Anybody? He just said to me that I don't own him and he will take care of me. I get that impression because to wake up and you get more still angry, you know, you get that impression because he gets so good to you because you didn't have to wake up. Yeah. A lot of people need to look at that. Tell other people about him. Yep. <clears throat> Janelle? I'm just going to say kind of like Mark and Carolyn said, we wake up in the morning. God has something for you. So ask him to direct you and what to say and what you think and what you think. Because he has work for you. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, God tells us to do what I've read that song. All of us. God's call to Jesus uh, relevant to you? I think that's kind of the whole crux of the matter, isn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. We are followers. We are followers, and God's call to Jesus is relevant to us because that's our salvation by accepting Christ as our Savior. And question number 12, how are you responding to God's call? Well, you you responded by being here today, didn't you? Deontay responded to God's call by being here today. And you responded to God's call by making your pledges to the church, by being involved in probably 57 different committees uh, over time. Uh, you know, all of you have responded in a variety of ways for Raytown Christian Church, and more importantly, for God's kingdom. Uh, and we continue to do that. We continue to do that. Pastor Michael reminds us every Sunday that we're continuing to do that. We're pushing forward, and we're remembering to forget those things that might keep us separate from God. Don't let that baggage prevent you from being with him. Do we have anything else to add? He shows up there one step behind Jesus his whole life. He never really finds trying to do the man on the cross. Mm. He's here by Jesus. He's just one step behind him. Moses is? No, this the fourth wise man. Oh. I see. Anything else before we close? I think it's incredible to be in the church that long. <laughs> That's pretty good. I only got a text on my phone. My daughter's church and the pastor said, people were asking the question, should we go to church today? He said, of course you go the last Sunday and the first Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get this text. I read it out last week. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sunday school class, for each and every one of us here, that together we are stronger, that we enjoy the fellowship with each other. We enjoy sharing with each other and learning from each other. And we're just are so grateful for this group of people interacting with each other. And for all the other members of our church, we enjoy interacting with as well. 
all of us uh, a community uh, of God to help spread the gospel throughout this area. And Father, you heard us cite the names of many people that are in need of your power, your power to heal, your power to comfort, or your power to protect. We'd ask that you would be with the Wigfall family as they go through grief uh, this week and for quite a while longer. We ask for travel mercies for all the family that are traveling from afar to protect them on their ways. Uh, we ask for you to be with Larry Johnson, who's suffering with his um, diabetic attack and to, to help that get taken care of. We ask you to be with Barbara Godley and, uh, and her sister as they grieve the loss of her sister's husband. And, uh, be with them through this difficult time. We ask you to be with uh, David's father suffering from COVID. We also ask for travel mercies for David and Merlin as they head down to Texas. We ask for your healing powers to be with Janelle's youngest daughter suffering from COVID. And certainly, Father, we ask for your healing powers to be with Donna Faust as she has to go back for oral surgery this week. Uh, be with the oral surgeon and the people helping uh, that it might all go smoothly and heal properly. And Father, we're so grateful for Deontay being back with us today. And we ask for prayers of healing for his Aunt Jaquita, for his cousin, and, and for his longtime friend. And also, Father, we're grateful for Clarence getting some feelers for jobs. And we hope that he will soon receive a, a, a call uh, indicating which job in particular. Also, Father, we ask for your prayers of uh, comfort for your comforting powers to be with Jerry Pitts in the loss of his wife and for that family and also for the family of Andy Clapp who passed away this week. Father, we're so grateful to have Geraldine with us today even though she was in the emergency room last night. We're grateful that you brought her to be with us to share what's going on with her and ask for the healing power to be uh, in her to help the swollen legs go down and help the medicine to work. We ask for your be with Carolyn Ov Overfield uh, to strengthen her as she seems to be losing strength and becoming frail. I ask you to be with her father and to be with Carolyn Boney's grandson and he's suffering from lockjaw. Please, please remove that from this grandson so that he might heal. And Father, each of us have prayers that we may not have said aloud for ourselves, for others. You know what our prayers are, or maybe we should say what they should be. We ask that you would hear those prayers father and we are so grateful that you do and we are so grateful to be your children in jesus name we pray amen well happy new year to everybody thank you steve you're welcome happy new year. thank you artists you have a good Bye -bye. one yes joanne bye-bye